Yeah. Hola Cancun, what an Hello. epic DEF CON this was. Can we agree? Let's give it up for Ethereum Foundation and everyone making this happen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So let me play this. Okay. Let's see. Uh, is this okay? Oh. Try something else. Whoop. <laughs> uh, where's the mirroring? Is there a separate display? No. Technology. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, before we begin, I would like to ask how many of you have heard of Akasha before? Can we see a show of... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's, that is impressive. And uh, I'm just curious how many of you have actually tried the Alpha? And, uh, wow. Okay, so we Pretty have nice. quite a few Alpha veterans. Thank you for taking the time to play with uh, the app. Um, for those of you who haven't heard of Akasha before, as a word, it comes from Sanskrit, and it means ether. But it also uh, stands as an acronym for Advanced Knowledge Architecture for Social Human Advocacy. And what we are trying to build is a peer-to-peer -peer alternative in a world where the social media networks are modeled after the Napster architecture, where the user depends on a server or a server operator or an entity. Uh, and we want to tackle this prob problem from a different perspective using different technologies. So, in a word, we want to showcase the potential of Ethereum combined with IPFS to solve all problems using new technologies. And uh, the thing we want to achieve is a shared and persistent information commons that can help people put the, <laughs> that can help people regain their collective memory and freedom of expression back from the clause of corporations that monetize each click and really everything. It's really bad. So uh, to put it uh, visually, uh, the Napster web apps are, Napster-like web apps, uh, rely on the server admin or the server itself. And if uh, for some reason the user does not comply or respect whatever the server operator wants, uh, they lose access to the service. In the alpha, we took the hardest challenge we could find, which was to build a fully decentralized desktop app, uh, meaning that each user, when they downloaded and installed the Akash application, they were actually installing, bundled an Ethereum node and an IPFS node. So in the beta, thanks to hard work of the team, we will also introduce a fully functional web version, which will remove the need to sync with, with the chain. And the users will then uh, rely on MetaMask or any other Web3 service provider like Status or, or Mist. And when we say that free speech is embedded in software, what we mean is that uh, whereas the user can be kicked for whatever reason from the Napster-like uh, web apps, on Akasha, the users are in full control over their identity and the content they are posting. So our story began on May 6th, well, May 3rd, 2016 on World Press Freedom Day. And this is when we basically announced that we've been working for quite some time on the Akasha Alpha. It was a total shot in the dark for us. We weren't sure exactly what to expect, so it was kind of a test to see how it will be received. Among ourselves, before we released the website, we, we talked and we say, okay, man, what would, <laughs> what would we consider a success? You know, just to, to have some some numbers, and Marius here said like 30 people in the first 24 hours would be cool. Roxana here, more optimistic, 50 people, and I was secretly hoping at around 100. Uh, mm -hmm. 24 hours later, we surpassed 200 signups, which was like, whoa. And then in less than a month, we surpassed 2,000 people. So uh, it became clear that we weren't crazy or that we weren't the only ones. So these, ne these numbers might not seem much at first, but it's worth mentioning that every single person that signed up for the alpha reached organically our website. So we just published blog posts, uh, linked them on Reddit, or tweeted them. So what we wanted was to measure the real interest in the application, and we felt that paid advertising would tame those results. So we would end up measuring the efficiency of targeted ads rather than the re real interest in, in the application and idea. So fast forwarding until early 2017, one year after Ethereum, we launched the first public version of the alpha. 
and it was called into the ether. It was received very well by the community, and uh, I suppose you guys also tried it. Hope uh, you had a pleasant experience when, when, you, when you tried it. And basically in the alpha, we uh, try to have a basic functionality you find in a social network, which was to publish something, to comment on something, to read something, to vote, and to follow people. Uh, combined also with things like since we are using Ethereum, one of the side effects is that each identity is also a wallet, so people can also send resources to each other and so forth. And after the release, one of uh, this is actually a, sc a screen uh, from the Akasha application, a comment. And uh, on the first row, you can see that someone was like excited that there's a DAP that normal people can use. And, and for us, it was like uh, exactly what we were aiming for. But I think the big point here was that with all these people, you and the, uh, the others that might be watching this, uh, this conference, uh, we proved that it is possible. It is possible to have an application that does not rely on servers for people to communicate uh, among themselves. And thanks to your playfulness and your time put into testing the application, we identified some bugs, and we also identified what can be done better. And uh, Marius now is gonna explain one of the lessons we learned in the alpha and that we applied in the beta. Marius? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So what is this? Yeah. I think all, all, all the alpha users got stuck at a given time in this uh, loading, uh, loading screen. Um, this was happening because of the way we used to load the resources. Uh, we were trying to get all of them at once. Um, so uh, if at a given time uh, one of the resources would, would be unavailable, the, uh, all of the other resources would have to wait for that one to become online before uh, fetching them uh, to the user. Yeah. So um, in the beta version, this was one of the biggest challenge we, we had to solve. Um, We've done this by loading every single resource individually, as you can see in this demo. Yeah. So it comes with a great improvement on the UX uh, side. Yeah. So uh, enough with this. Uh, yeah. yeah, so another highlight of the, of the beta is the first token experiment. In the alpha, we had AETH, which served as a placeholder token. And I just want to, to make something clear. This is, uh, there is just one token, which is this, currently uh, nicknamed AETH. We are open to suggestions uh, regarding the name. We want to avoid confusion with other projects, like Ethereum, if anyone heard of it. <laughs> 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 okay, and uh, this is just an experiment to get the ball running, right? So we fully assume that uh, we are, uh, we don't have all the answers, but we invite everyone to uh, collaborate on finding them. So to give you an overview of how this token works, uh, on the surface, AETH is a, in an ERC-20 compatible token. It works pretty much as you would expect from an ERC-20 token you can send and receive. But there is a twist. Uh, you can lock it for a predefined uh, amount of time, and this will give you some uh, something we call mana, which acts like a, a regenerable crypto fuel that can be burned inside the application. Marius will cover this in more detail afterwards. And Essence uh, is uh, basically mana that is burned, and if uh, uh, the quality of the content is deemed as good, uh, the authors and the persons interacting can uh, consume this essence to mint new tokens in existence. And not lastly, Karma is our experiment on the proto-reputation layer. And um, um, Marius now will give you uh, a presentation of the token flow of the states and how everything ties in together. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so starting from the beta version, every user will have to burn a small amount of uh, mana to interact with the application. So, uh, how do we how do we get mana? Yeah. Um, a user can um, uh, get some mana by locking his Akasha tokens for a period of time during which he gets periodically the mana replenished. Yeah. Uh, the mana used for, um, uh, the, the mana burned for uh, doing actions in Akasha um, can be collected afterwards uh, 
into two specific resources called essence and karma. Karma will serve in Akasha like some sort of proto-reputation which will unlock specific features like creating communities and so on, which will require uh, to be above a level of karma. The other one, the essence, uh, it's interesting because uh, this is the first uh, idea which came to us to incentivize um, the users to create content on Akasha because it can be consumed to mint new ERC20 Akasha tokens and be spent afterwards. Also, at any given time, um, the user can unlock their magnified uh, tokens and afterwards it will go to the ERC20 state by passing to a delay time, which we call it a cycle. Yeah. So let's see uh, a new uh, basic flow. So we have the publisher, which posts an entry on Akasha. Uh, the readers afterwards can express their uh, general feeling about the quality uh, of the content by voting. After a voting period, uh, the entry will generate a small amount of essence which afterwards can be claimed by both publisher and the reader by specific use case. Yeah, you can <laughs> look on, yeah. the, on the flyers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like when we were starting to feel good about ourselves, like, yeah, man, I think we're onto something here. Uh, Vitalik did it again. So then just a few days ago, Vitalik published this, uh, this entry. So uh, he basically uh, pointed out that there are more than just uh, um, so a good token economic system uh, requires more than just a, a way to insert units of uh, that particular currency into circulation. And, um, you know, uh, this is uh, quite interesting because uh, following a couple of days, so the media started to digest this information and started calling uh, the tokens uh, invented until this point uh, as tokens 1.0. And, you know, if you think about it, it's pretty accurate since we are still barely scratching the surface of what can be done. And we are still trying to understand the basic pieces of the puzzle that uh, make a good to token work. And then things kept uh, snowballing and <laughs> by, by, <laughs> by the end of the day, we had like this, this sort of stuff. It's like everything you need to know about cryptocurrencies. <laughs> so, um, you know, 90% of startups in general fall, so maybe it would have been more accurate to say that with a poorly designed token, 99% of the token startups will fall. But <laughs> to focus on the positive, uh, the question of how do we get to token 2.0 started to, to take shape. And uh, since Vitalik, thanks, started this, uh, I figured that it's best to just show a short video of uh, a, re uh, a short segment of a recent video done by uh, Vitalik. So without further ado. And the nice thing about cryptocurrency, I think, is that it just makes it so bloody easy to create one of these economic mechanisms. You just write it up in code. That it just makes it really easy to, yeah, to sort of serve as an economic experimentation ground for doing these kinds of things. And? So, you know, the sort of... The, the, the whole point of economic experimentation is sort of coming up with these sort of clever, clever little tricks to sort of combine together incentives and sort of put, you know, put things together in this nice way that gives people the, in, the incentive to do the right thing. And you know, just, you know, there's probably quite a lot to be done. It's just, uh, I think we're barely getting started. We are barely getting started. I like to focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's still just year two after Ethereum. And um, our approach to this thing, to, to uh, maybe answering this question, is that uh, just as Ethereum had uh, during its frontier uh, the Ethereum uh, Olympics, uh, where, our, where developers from around the world were invited to identify bugs, attack vectors, and basically, if you can break it, go ahead and we'll learn from it, from it, we'll become stronger. Uh, we invite everyone uh, here and uh, that's watching the presentation to join us in uh, breaking and reinventing and re-breaking the token proposal. And basically with the AETH proposal and what we uh, showcase today, we want to just get a prototype in the wild and then uh, in a sort of cypherpunk inception like uh, fashion to iterate, co-create in the open, on Akasha itself. 
So uh, we will use tags to, to coordinate, and later on, if we still have time, we will show you an actual demo of how this, uh, this will work. But basically, what we want or hope is that uh, if we approach things from this perspective, maybe people and, and startups can think of, uh, of tokens as these dynamic adaptive systems which involve multiple pieces that you have to carefully uh, put together uh, rather than a graph going from zero to the moon, right? So um, I think together, if we will tackle this, uh, this question, um, we might uh, reach some emergent shared understanding because uh, no one has like the full idea of what is token 2.0, but a thousand little half-baked ideas can come together in something completely new. And the cool thing about this is that, this is a quote I really like, is that the mind, once stretched by a new idea, never return to its original dimensions. And if you want uh, an example, just remember that in uh, 2014, Ethereum had the uh, Ether pre-sale, which uh, led to uh, around $18.5 million being raised to fund the development of the platform. And it was number one, as in the most successful crowdfunding campaign in the history of the internet. And now, a couple of years later, over $3 billion have been raised by companies using ICOs as a form of raising funds for their projects. So just one idea, huge impact. So now, the big picture of what we are trying to accomplish is like we're not trying to compete with the big boys. I mean, they have billions of users, would be nice, but let's get real. Uh, we want to have a real alternative in, in place to keep them in check. And uh, this is not like a paper or plastic bag choice. We want to offer people a fundamentally different choice when it comes to each person's digital sovereignty as human netizens. And uh, I think we can all agree, after this uh, beautiful DEF CON, that watching history in the making is cool. But we think that writing the future ourself is even cooler. So on this note, we invite everyone to, be, to, to join us in building together in this decade a better knowledge uh, architecture for the next century. And uh, we actually have all the tools uh, and we have like a pretty good idea of where things can go. And uh, the future is not a place we get to visit. The future is a place we get to create. And I would like to announce that the beta signups are open for everyone that wants to participate and uh, subscribe. Just go to akasha.world, insert your email, in a, in, and in a matter of weeks, we will send you the invites, and we will start release the, the beta. And since I see we still have two minutes, I will now show you a demo of what the beta looks like. And this is basically the dashboard view, in which we have like different streams and different columns, which can be customized by the users. And here we add a, a column, which is a tag, and in this case, it's Crypto Olympic. So people can coordinate on the ideas, brainstorm. These are proposals. They can use the entries and the comment section as counter proposals or to discuss various uh, uh, ideas. And this is like an example in which is Ola Cancun, Ola Defcon, how, how it works to publish uh, a comment. As you can see, the UI has uh, changed quite a bit. Also in the back end, we uh, basically are now looking at a completely rewritten decentralized application from DAP. So it would be more correct to call it uh, Akasha like version two. Yeah. But since we started with the alpha, we, we will name it uh, beta. And here on the left side, these are what we call boards for now, and basically offers like different windows into specific topics. So if we take the example of DEF CON, one of the, co of the boards could have been like events, presentations, workshops, and people could have coordinated better rather than checking on Reddit, uh, 10 Discord rooms, uh, one Slack, you get the idea, two Gitters, and, and so on. So I would like to thank you all for your attention. And uh, it's uh, great being here. Hope to see you on Akasha soon. Yeah. <laughs>